My God, these stairs are treacherous. I think someone's trying to kill me. <laughs> Falkland, my old day. friend. <laughs> oh, by the way, Mum, there was a gentleman upstairs to see you. Shall I show him down? He's down, simpleton. Very good, Mum. How are you, Jack? <laughs> Or is it still Anson uh, Beverly? Uh, still Beverly to my Lydia, Falkland. Oh, Jack, why don't you convince her to go off with you at once? What? And lose two-thirds of her fortune? Oh, no. <laughs> you trifle too long, Jack. Propose to her, woo the aunt, and get Sir Anthony's... Your father's consent. Are you unaware of Miss Lydia Languish's peculiar, singular taste in these uh, matters of love? Uh, she prefers... Uh, lowly, humble, off-pay ensign, namely Beverly, to a wealthy captain in a distinguished regiment, and namely, a Jack Absolute. Oh, whoa. <laughs> ah, yes, Falkland. But what of your own love, Mrs. Julia Melville? Oh, I have not seen her, my dearest Julia, these several months. I fret for her safety. I lose sleep over her health. I am distraught with worry over her well-being. I have been away from her for far too long, Jack. Ah... Oh. I love her so deeply that I am in constant pain. Ah, uh, you know that she is here in Bath. Nay, Jack, do not trifle with me. Good fault, and within this very hour she has arrived here in Bath with my father, her guardian, Sir Anthony Absolute. My, these steps are treacherous. Well, don't worry. If I hurt myself, I'll pay. Ah, oh, Jack. Bob Akers, my old friend. Good day, Jack. Oh, by the way, Mum, there was another gentleman upstairs to see you. Shall I show him down as well? He's down, simpleton. Very good, Mum. You are my friend, aren't you, Jack? Of course I am, Bob. And it is only because you are my friend that I would ask a favour of you. Oh, anything, Jack. You don't hate me, then? Uh, not yet. And my friend over there, Mr. Falkland, has been away from his lady love, Miss Julia Melville, for a considerable time, and he uh, frets constantly. Ah. Oh. You live near my father, her guardian's place in Devonshire. Perhaps you can assure him as to her, uh, well-being? But of course. I'll do anything for my good friend, Jack. Good Bob. Mr. Falkland. Miss Melville's Falkland. The same. He is worried on the health and spirits of his lady. Aha. She enjoys good health and spirits. Never saw her better in me life. And not just a little on the pale side. Never saw her better in me life. I've heard she's been a trifle sickly. Just a little bit indisposed. Fault, sir. Only said to vex you. Just a little indisposed. She was the picture of perfection. Damn. Joyous and feeling fit. I believe, sir, it bothers you. She wasn't sick. It doesn't bother me a bit. It doesn't bother him one iota. It doesn't bother him a bit. But in the absence of one's lover, slight melancholy wouldn't disagree. Have I been joyous, lively, entertaining? I acquit you of all three. The lady is so accomplished at harpsichord and song. As she sang. When absent from my soul's delight. Not quite. Quite wrong. She sang a song that meant a lot to me. It was my heart, my own, my will is free. Ah, what's the matter with this fellow? He's only happy to be reassured. He's only happy to be reassured that she was a picture of perfection, joyous and feeling fit. If music is the food of love, it shouldn't bother you. It doesn't bother me a bit. It doesn't bother him one iota. It doesn't bother him a bit. You should have seen her dancing. Dancing? Sir, what then? It's society's obligation to dance. And I suppose that she danced with men. Oh, come, sir. All right, my lips have to dance to a minuet. What a prank. I'll have you know she minuets very well, my friend. She's even better. At a country jig. A jig. A jig. With men. With men. Oh, no. Oh, no.
was the picture of perfection, a smile, a charm, a wit. He's happy, she's so happy. It doesn't bother me, it doesn't bother him. It doesn't bother me, it doesn't bother him. It doesn't bother me, it doesn't bother him.